going to be lickety split quick, I think, if I can get the computer to do what it's supposed to do. librarian here. I specialize in local history and genealogy. If you have anything you need in those realms, please do not hesitate to ask me. I'm here at your all service. But one of the fun things I get to do is because I deal with local history, if I find anything of interest, usually I can pretty much run with it. And I had originally, I was going to speak about um, the McDowell House in general. So everybody knows about Ephraim McDowell House. It has been set up as a museum since the 1930s in honor of Ephraim McDowell, the physician who performed the first um, overectometry. He took out a 22-pound tumor from this woman without anesthesia <laughs> back in the early 1800s. And that is the story that is told about that house. That is all I knew about that house growing up. But there's this time period from about 1880 until um, 1930 for the house and then 1950s for the apothecary beside it where it was a boarding house, restaurants, barber shops, pool hall, very much an active <coughs> business building. And so I thought, oh great, I can talk about this beautiful history. Well, there's too much. There's way too much <laughs> for me to talk about. But Kitty Bell, she had me at her name. Um, Kitty Bell Ferris Weatherford Crotus. Um, she ran a boarding house and a restaurant out of the McDowell House and I thought she would be fabulous to talk about. I do not have an image of her. If anybody ever sees one, please let me know. But she did die in 1939, but surely somewhere, someplace, somebody has got a picture of her. She only had one child, um, a daughter, which also limits how much came down through the family. But still, she, she, I love her, I'm in love. So you need to understand, the original architecture of the McDowell House was the, if you look, this is Main Street right here, and it's set, this is it's pretty much how it is set up now. If you've been in there recently, you've got two big front rooms, dining room, the kitchen, um, random stuff here. The the apothecary would be right here. In 1901, it had been added onto. This is the apothecary with this large section in back that had been added on. Uh, <coughs> same thing here. They had added on more to accommodate um, as a boarding house to put in more apartments. So when we talk about the number of people who are living there, it's not in the same size structure that we have now. It was a much larger structure. <coughs> so Kitty Bell Ferris Weatherford Crotus. She was born in Boyle County, so she's a local gal. Uh, her first marriage was to Hen Henry Weatherford in 1895. By 1897, they're listed in the local directory as running a boarding house. Um, out of McDowell Place, at, at a McDowell House, and I, her early history is a little difficult to put together. Um, I've got her death certificate later on, but it looks like her mother might have lived either, if not, she may have lived with her mother in, in the McDowell House growing up, or <coughs> just right next to it, but I can't pin that down, I'm still working on that. Um, they had one child, Elizabeth. Uh, when it appears that she and Henry weren't living together towards the end of his life. They may have been separated, um, but still married. When he died in 21, she married, remarried to John Crowdis, also Crowder. It's been misspelled any number of ways. Um, and they were married until the end of their lives, and she died just less than a year after he did. It's just one of those things that's just like, oh. And the other interesting thing I found out before I, you know, because I always try to find last minute things, when she, the house that she lived in after McDowell House was um, an old toll road building on Stanford. That, and it was in the paper because it, it was a fire, caught fire and burned down. But still, just amazing, nice little connections there of, of history. So this is her marriage to Henry. and. It's hard to read, but the prince, of the, it was a marriage bond, you know, so it was guaranteed that she would marry him or be her. 
And Joe Burdett is listed as the surety for that. I'm pretty sure that that was her father, by because it, it shows up on her death certificate. But there, there's no other confirmation for that. But it just he showed up twice, and and then she was living with um, a guy who was very much the right age to be her brother. So we're, I'm still piecing all of that together. Um, this is the 1897 directory where you can see Henry Weatherford. He's colored, married, and a hostler, meaning a boarding house on South 2nd Street. Hmm. And I also I went to the city I went to the city um, records trying to find out, you know, any business licenses, any things. But the and sadly the city records don't go far enough back to to cover this time period. Um, so this is from the 19. 100 U.S. Census. One of the things I want to point out is when you read some of the older histories of McDowell House, it talks about it being a flop house, house of ill repute, any number of other things. But if you look at the census records and you see who was actually living there, it was inexpensive housing for people who worked. <laughs> and so it's just one of those things where you read in the history and it's like, yeah, maybe you all weren't exactly giving, you know, they weren't looking at the whole picture of who actually lived and worked there. Um, and I'll also say that it got a bad reputation for being a slum and run down, but nobody ever talks about the owner of the property, who was Whizzaker. And he was the one, he owned so much property down there in the, on the 2nd Street, when as soon as he could start buying it up in the early 1900s, he did all the Constitution Square area that we have now, across the, across the way in the McDowell House, down the way. If he could buy it, he did. And he was the slumlord, but nobody ever mentions that because we you know, loved Whizzaker here because of Whizzaker Park and all of his family gave to the town. Um, Kitty Bell had a restaurant, and it was full service. <laughs> she was often, often um, arrested for liquor sales. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I didn't realize, I mean, this is, it ran from the earliest that family was, that's 1904. She was in the papers in 1901, and then the latest was 1912, I think. But in 1905, they got her with 60 quart bottles of beer, 60 quart bottles of, oh, 60 pint bottles of beer, three gallons of whiskey. So obviously, she was supplying quite a bit of town with her, with her, um, with her restaurant. Uh, she always paid her fines. And she always went back to work. <laughs> so, just, which is the other reason I like her. This woman knew how to make a buck. She knew her, her patronage. Um, by 1909, you only have Kitty Bell living at the 2nd Street address at McDowell House. And I'm not quite sure. Her husband did have a place on 4th Street. And she appears there every now and again. Um, but they seem to have been separated by this time. Another, the boarding house, this is the show that people living there were laborers, there were cooks, laundry, um, laundresses, and railroad workers tended to be the, the big, the big uh, employers. Here she gets married to John Crotus, and her father is listed at the bottom as um, Joe Burdett, or John Burdett, and there was also a Joe Burdett, and that's where it gets kind of, it gets kind of weird and hinky. Um, I was really excited when I came across this document because it listed her parents. And I could go back a little bit further. When she died in 1939, um, you'll notice that at, well, at the bottom it says UK for <coughs> father's name unknown. Um, and her mother was Hattie Caldwell. She is listed on her first marriage certificate as Ferris. And again, I'm not sure how all the different names come together or if there's another marriage in there that I'm missing. That being said, she would have been awfully young if she had a marriage previous to Henry. And then, so that's Kitty Bell. I love her. I'm still looking for information on her. If anybody ever sees an image of her, please let me know. Uh, and the other thing to know is the first pool room on 2nd Street opened in 1911. They applied for their, their license and they got it and it was in the, uh, the apothecary. And even in 1928, I did find a business and uh, the business license for the pool halls as Jones and Rom still going very strong. So that's my lickety split lecture on <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> and I'm going to turn it over to you.